And what monks is the noble truth of the way of practice leading to the cessation of suffering. It is just this noble eightfold path. Namely, right view, right thoughts, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. And what monks is right view? It is monks, the knowledge of suffering, the knowledge of the origin of suffering, the knowledge of the cessation of suffering, the knowledge of the way of practice leading to the cessation of suffering. This is called right view. And what monks is right thought? The thought of renunciation, thought of non-ill will, thought of harmlessness. This monks is called right thoughts. And what monks is right speech? Refraining from lying, refraining from slander or uh, carrying tales uh, to cause disharmony, uh, refraining from that. Uh, refraining from harsh speech or coarse speech, uh, refraining from frivolous speech uh, or gossip. Uh, this is called right speech. And what monks is right action? Refraining from taking life, refraining from taking what is not given, refraining from sexual misconduct. This is called right action. And what monks is right livelihood? Here monks, the Aryan disciple, having given up wrong livelihood, keeps himself by right livelihood. And what monks is right effort? Stop here for a moment. This right livelihood uh, is to uh, find your livelihood in a way that does not harm oneself and others. And what monks is right effort? Here monks, a monk arouses his will, makes an effort, stirs up energy, exerts his mind, and strives to prevent the arising of unarisen, evil, unwholesome mental states. Similarly, he arouses his will to overcome evil, unwholesome mental states that have arisen. Uh, thirdly, he arouses his will to produce unarisen, wholesome mental states. Fourthly, he arouses his will uh, to maintain wholesome mental states that have arisen. Uh, this is called right effort. And what monks is right mindfulness or right recollection. Here monks, a monk abides contemplating the body in the body, ardent, clearly aware and mindful. Uh, similarly, he abides contemplating feelings in feelings, mind in mind, dhamma in dhamma. This is called right mindfulness. And what monks is right concentration. Here a monk, detached from sense desires, detached from unwholesome mental states, enters and remains in the first jhana, similarly with the second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana. This is called right concentration. And that monks is called the way of practice leading to the cessation of suffering. So he abides contemplating dhamma in dhamma internally, contemplating mind uh, dhamma in dhamma externally, uh, both internally and externally. He abides contemplating arising factors in Dhamma, vanishing factors in Dhamma, arising and vanishing factors in Dhamma. Or else mindfulness that there is Dhamma is present just to the extent necessary for knowledge and awareness. And he abides detached, not grasping at anything in the world. And that monks is how a monk abides contemplating Dhamma in Dhamma, in respect of the Four Noble Truths. Whoever monks should practice these four intense states of mindfulness for just seven years may expect one of two results, either arahanship in this life or if there should be some substrate left, the state of non-returner or anagamin, let alone seven years. Whoever should practice them for six years, five years, four years, three years, two years, one year may expect one of two results similarly. Let alone one year, whoever should practice them for seven months, six months, five, four, three months, one month, half a month, uh, let alone half a month, whoever should practice these four intensities of mindfulness for just one week or seven days may expect one of two results, either arahantship in this life or should, if there should be some substrate left, the state of non-returner, anagamin. It was said, there is monks this one-way path to the purification of beings, for the overcoming of sorrow and distress, for the disappearance of pain and sadness, for the gaining of the right path, for the realization of Nibbana, that is to say, the four intense states of mindfulness. And it is for this reason that it was said. Thus the Lord spoke, and the monks rejoiced and were delighted at his words. At the end of the sutta. So here you see uh, the last part the Buddha says, uh, if you really practice the four satipatthanas uh, for one week, uh, you can become an arahan. Uh, so you think carefully, uh, if you just practice mindfulness for one week, uh, can you become an arahan? No. 
But because it is intense state of mindfulness, uh, intense means uh, unremitting mindfulness on one object. Unremitting, you know, not even for a second, uh, your mindfulness slips. Uh. That means uh, you don't really sleep. You don't really sleep. Uh. Uh, so you see, uh, somebody like Maha Mogalana, he became enlightened in seven days, the shortest period uh, for any Arahan, uh, any of the Buddha's disciples. Uh. How did he do it in seven days? He didn't sleep. That's why in the suttas uh, we find uh, he he was uh, able to enter the first jhana. Then after that, uh, he the sloth and topper came uh, and he started to nod his head. Uh. Then the Buddha was watching him uh, from afar using psychic power. Then the Buddha came out of his body in a golden body out to the head uh, and went to him and told him, Moglana, Moglana, uh, be mindful, don't be drowsy. Uh, then he... He got a shock. He didn't expect the Buddha to come all the way from so far to in the middle of the night uh, to, to, to tell him to be mindful. Uh. So then immediately uh, he drove harder. Uh. So for seven nights like uh, that, uh, he didn't sleep. Uh. So he knew the Buddha was watching him all the time. So he practiced extremely hard. Uh. So seven days, uh, seven nights, uh, he became enlightened. Uh, that, is, that is what I mean by intense states of mindfulness. Just... The normally you see like here they translate it uh, on the foundations of mindfulness. You practice the foundations of mindfulness, you won't become enlightened in seven days. But you can become enlightened in seven days uh, if you practice intense state of mindfulness, uh, which means unremitting mindfulness, uh, unslipping mindfulness uh, uh, on one object. Uh. Say for example, the breathing. Uh, you are mindful of the breathing uh, without slipping. Uh. And then uh, you can attain the jhanas one by one, uh, up to the four jhanas. And when a person attains the four jhanas, uh, the mind is very strong. When the mind is very strong, uh, then uh, you have uh, cut down the five hindrances uh, to a very low level, uh, which means the sloth and topper uh, is very low. And then only uh, you can maintain your mindfulness without sleeping. If your mindfulness is not cut to a very low level, uh, how can you stop yourself from sleeping? Uh, that's why uh, the four jhanas are extremely important in the Buddha's teaching. Only by attaining the four jhanas, uh, the Buddha says uh, that you can become an anagamin or an arahan. Without the four jhanas, uh, there's no way uh, you can become an uh, anagamin or an arahan. Uh, I will stop here. Um. We just talk about uh, when we do think uh, mindfulness of uh, one option. Can we take the problem as a uh, one option, which we can contemplate? Uh, take what? Take uh, body as a whole. I mean, uh, in the sutta, how many people body as a lot of different options, right? Huh. Can we take uh, the body as a whole, as one option? Yes, yes. Yeah. Then we can contemplate at one time and the first two parts at one time. Yes, the point of this uh, satipatthana or unremitting uh, mindfulness uh, or uh, intense state of mindfulness, uh, the object, uh, the motive uh, is to attain the jhanas. And after you attain the jhanas, uh, you have to attain up to the four jhanas, according to the Buddha's words. And after you have attained the four jhanas, and then you come out of the four jhanas, and then you contemplate, for example, the four noble truths, and then you will understand, and then you can attain enlightenment. So in the suttas, the Buddha always says, enlightenment, you need both samatha and vipassana. The samatha part is to attain the four jhanas. The vipassana part is to contemplate the Buddha's dhamma. Okay, um, I quite understand what uh, the concept is meant to offer from the five hindrances. Uh, you just said to, uh, just to know when you're uh, in a ill world, in a ill world. Oh, no, no, no. That, um, that is just contemplating the five hindrances. But to get rid of the five hindrances in some other suttas, it says that you have to attain jhana. When you attain jhana, then the five hindrances uh, disappear. 
disappear or are eliminated na uh, it means uh, it is cut down to a very low degree so that it is no more a hindrance to you uh, so the only way is to attain the jhanas <laughs> When a person attains the jhanas, uh, it is reversible. So a person has to uh, keep practicing. Uh. But because that person has attained the jhana, uh, it is not too difficult for him to regain it uh, if he loses it. Uh. In the suttas, uh, uh, there was a disciple of the Buddha. He attained uh, 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 quite a high state of, of jhana. And then... Uh, Uh, he uh, mixed with a, a, a lot of people, and uh, I think one of the arahants uh, uh, rebuked him. And uh, one of the arahants uh, foresaw uh, that he would lose his jhana. And sure enough, after some time, uh, he lost his jhana. But later, uh, he practiced again and he regained it. Mm. For example, Devadatta is a good example. He attained all the Uh, four rupa jhanas and four arupas uh, and had psychic power but because of the ego uh, and not attaining right view uh, he uh, became very vain I want to take over the Buddha's place and when the Buddha refused him uh, uh, and scolded him uh, in front of everybody he got so angry he wanted to kill the Buddha uh, then he lost all his psychic powers uh, and he lost his jhana Both your own body and both outside na, other people's body. No? Yeah, both at the same time. Na. Both. Mm, both. Now one, sometimes you're contemplating, if you're contemplating your body internally, that means you only contemplate your body and yeah, not contemplate other people's body, okay? Then when you're contemplating externally, you're contemplating other people's body and not yours at all. Right? You're contemplating both, huh? sometimes you contemplate yours, sometimes you contemplate outside. Who you from the body, you the same. I don't Depends on what you... Oh, not necessary when you are sitting in meditation, you are walking about also, you can contemplate. Whether you open your eyes or your eyes closed, is it a form of visualization for the contemplating? Or contemplating words or doing? Is it meaning? For example, the two parts, can I keep meaning? Contemplate means thinking about it. Thinking about it. Also, I think one of them said to you, what do you use for the Pakistan now? We use to do whatever the four things. Reuse means uh, recapitulate, na, to go through again. Na. Yes, I, I read one book that seems to say that for the nine months down of the situation, it became a part of the Bobo, the nine Bobo. Say again. Oh, no, no. This is uh, Buddha's time. Uh, they contemplate the corpse. They really go and see. Here, the, 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 the sutta doesn't say use photo. <laughs> I have some photos. Uh, I probably it's Sri Lanka. Uh, they brought a corpse uh, into a cave, uh, and they left into the cave for the monks to contemplate. Uh. So this photo shows uh, the monks sitting there contemplating for many days. Uh.
Uh, of course, he uh, meal time. He'll go and eat, lah. Then he come back, uh, and then look at the corpse again. Stay there many hours looking at the corpse. Uh. Must be very smelly, lah. But he stay there just to see the various stages of decay, uh, uh, the worms and all that, uh, maggots and all that. Can you advise how to do so? So, how do you do it for Four elements. Uh. Four elements. Uh, I, I guess lah, uh, because I mentioned just now, uh, these four elements, uh, they are just a perception. Uh. So if you contemplate, uh, not only your body, uh, all physical things in the world uh, uh, are characterized by these four things lah. Uh. And these four things, because they are perceptions, uh, they are just a movement of the mind. uh. Just a movement of the mind. So everything that is physical uh, is also in the mind, in consciousness. That's, uh, I mean, probably some other teachers will tell you uh, another way. uh. Well, you have to decide, no? Mm. You also don't know your your own body, <laughs> Oh, that, that, that's what, what it, that's not what it means. Like. What it means is to consider the nature of your body. Like, like uh, uh, head hair, body hair, nails, teeth, skin, flesh, all this. Like. Uh, then if you consider yourself in terms of the four elements, like you have the heat in you, you have the hardness in you or softness, uh, different parts of your body. Uh, there are some parts are hard, there are some parts that are soft, isn't it, in your body. There are some parts that are warm, there are some parts that are not so warm. Uh, and uh, there's movement of air in your body, the different types of air uh, in your body that makes your blood move, that makes your wind move and all these things, that make your tears flow and all these things. Uh. And then uh, the other one, the liquids, uh, there are so many types of liquids in your body. Uh, you can contemplate uh, the blood, urine, pus, phlegm, uh, snot, mucus, oil, oil of the joints, etc. Uh, grease that comes out from your skin, uh, all this uh, sweat and all these things. Uh. So all these things uh, in your body, uh, you can contemplate uh, in terms of in, in this type of thing, in this, in, in this sense. Uh. And then if you think of other people's, uh, also, uh, you can think uh, other people's uh, sweat uh, is just as smelly as mine. <laughs> uh-huh. Other people's body is uh, just as ugly as mine. Mm. Pleasant, non-sensual feeling. Okay, uh, sensual and non-sensual. Uh. Sensual, I guess, refers to the uh, five senses, la. Uh, that means, uh, uh, from the eye, ear, nose, tongue, and body, uh, uh, the feeling arises, uh, because of seeing, uh, because of hearing a sound, a pleasant, uh, pleasant feeling arises, uh, because of seeing, because of hearing a sound, because of, uh, smell, taste, and Touch uh, or contact, uh, body contact, uh, pleasant feeling arises. Uh, that is a, a pleasant sensual feeling. Uh, and then a pleasant non-sensual feeling uh, is something from the mind. Uh, uh, because you think of something uh, and then uh, you're happy. Uh, that's a pleasant non-sensual feeling. Uh. Mm-hmm. 
of the mental state. You see, uh, we contemplate uh, the mental state uh, uh, for, uh, I think, a different reason. Uh, we contemplate the mental state, we contemplating, we contemplate feelings uh, to understand yourself better uh, so that you can uh, reduce your defilements. Uh, uh, if you contemplate your your mind, uh, your mental state, uh, then uh, uh, you are more aware of your defilements. Uh, then you can reduce it. Uh. But if you contemplate your mental state, uh, can you attain jhana? You cannot. You wait a while, wait a while. Okay, you watch your mind also, huh? that is just to make you understand yourself, to see your defilements, right? Uh, but it will not bring you into jhana. So if you want to to attain jhana, then you have to contemplate your body. No? Yeah, if you want to attain jhana, no? because jhana, it depends on what you want. No? As a layman, no? probably you think jhana is not important for you. So as a layman, you want to watch your mind to see your defilements, no? so that uh, you don't have too much defilements. We, don't make you suffer so much and don't make people around you suffer so much. Uh, then you contemplate your mind uh, and your feelings. Uh. But if you are a serious monk uh, who wants to attain liberation, uh, then he wants to attain the jhanas. And to attain the jhanas, uh, then he wants to go into a cave, a quiet place, uh, and meditate on his breath, uh, and only his breath, uh, until he attains one-pointedness of mind, uh, uh, and uh, enter the first jhana, and from the first jhana he goes to the second jhana, and all these things. No? So, uh, that is for a monk. Mm. Inside part, uh. the inside part probably uh, is uh, he wants to understand, uh, so he contemplates, uh, for example, arising factors in the body, uh, vanishing factors in the body, uh, to understand how, what factors uh, cause the body to arise, what factors cause the body to deteriorate, to die and all that, no? Uh. So, arising factors, for example, uh, what sustains the body? Uh, what caused the body to arise in the first place and what sustains the body? For example, the body is dependent on food, on good weather, uh, on clothing and all that. Uh, and then, uh, vanishing factors uh, is like the body one day uh, must grow old, must become sick uh, before it dies. Uh, and... Uh, uh, if you don't have the supporting conditions, uh, that will cause the body to disappear. No? So this is like to understand more no? the nature of the body. No? Are you talking about the page 336? Yeah. Because you say that after the major, the bad one, because I thought the first the mind was already under the side, I thought it was the nice. 
Contemplating uh, the breath, huh? they are only mindful of the breath going in and going out. You don't want to think. Huh? But this one, when he is not uh, 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 this one, like to when he is not trying to attain jhana, lah, then he can consider huh? what is it that supports the breath. What is it that causes the breath to disappear and all these things? Lah, to understand better. Lah. No. That understanding part nah, is not to attain jhana. Lah. Mm. Okay, one more question. The Vipassana came in our place also has its space in the uh, Sanjana. And do you think they misunderstand the Sutra? And um, the present uh, interpretation uh, of the Satipatthana Sutta by the uh, people who practice Vipassana, uh, you see this Vipassana method uh, that is taught now comes from the commentaries. And in the commentaries, they say uh, that a person, uh, there are five types of persons who become arahan, which is contradictory to the suttas. La. So that being the case, uh, their interpretation of the Satipatthana is also contradictory to the real intent of the Buddha. La. Because in the Buddha's words, uh, there is a sutta in the Majjhima Nikaya. The Buddha says, uh, uh, to eliminate the five lower factors, la, uh, you need to attain the four jhanas. In other words, to become an anagamin or an arahan, uh, you need to eliminate the four, uh, you need to attain the four jhanas. Uh, so the condition uh, to become an arahan or anagamin uh, is the four jhanas. But in the commentaries, they say there are five types of arahan. One is who has, there is one who has attained four jhanas. There is one who has attained three jhanas. This is not possible. There is one who has attained two jhanas, also not possible. There is one who has attained one jhana, also not possible. And then there is one that has no jhana. And then they use this last one, they call it the pure vipassana, uh, arahan. Uh, and then uh, they use this to say uh, that you can practice pure vipassana meditation without any jhana. So they interpret uh, uh, the practice of Satipatthana in terms of uh, kanika samadhi, uh, momentary concentration, which is not mentioned by the Buddha at all because it's such a ordinary uh, samadhi. Everybody has momentary concentration. That means uh, you are mindful of one object after another, mindful object of mana, which everybody has. Lah. So... They use that uh, to say uh, you can practice uh, Satipatthana by this way, uh, using only um, momentary concentration, no need to attain jhana. But you look here, uh, when he talks about uh, the four noble truths, uh, let me see, under uh, page what? Okay, page uh, 349, uh, what is right concentration? Here, yeah, right concentration is first jhana, second jhana, third and fourth jhana. So how can you practice uh, satipatthana without the four jhanas? Here yeah, is very clear, it says, the four jhanas. Ma. Isn't it? So what do you think? You think the interpretation uh, that you can practice satipatthana without the four jhanas is correct or not? 
Hmm. Also, uh, if you uh, listen to the uh, Sangyutta Nikaya talks uh, or read the Sangyutta Nikaya, you find uh, that uh, in the Satipatthana Sangyutta, uh, there is one sutta where the Buddha gave a simile of the cook. Uh, and in that sutta, the Buddha says, uh, a skillful monk, uh, if he practices Satipatthana, he must end up uh, with concentration, must attain the jhanas. Uh, but another unskillful monk, uh, he practices Satipatthana and then he does not end up with concentration. He does not get the jhanas. That is the unskillful way of practicing. Uh, so the skillful way of practicing, uh, it must end up with jhana. That's why I say uh, it is an uh, intense state, uh, uh, unremitting mindfulness. Uh, uh. That's why I always say uh, that it's important to study many suttas. Uh, some people, they just study Satipat- Satipatthana Sutta and they say, oh, uh, no need jhana. Right. Uh, even this Maha Satipatthana Sutta, I say that you need the four jhanas. Mm. But in the shorter one, uh, the Satipatthana Sutta in the Majjhima Nikaya, it does not talk about the four noble truths. Because it does not talk about the four noble truths, and it doesn't mention about uh, right concentration. Uh, but here, when it mentions about right concentration, then definitely uh, uh, four jhanas are necessary. Na. Otherwise, uh, a person, if he does not attain the four jhanas, uh, then he's practicing the nobles, the, the unnoble uh, uh, sevenfold path. Uh, the noble path is the noble eightfold path. Uh, uh, the ignoble path is the sevenfold path. Mm. Okay, and to cultivate China using uh, Satipatthana, yeah. one of the key important, one of the most important factors is that we cultivate body as the body of yeah. uh, feeling as feeling, mind as mind. This yeah. is very important. Uh, body in the body. Body in the body. Mm. So especially the body one. If you want to attain jhana, you must contemplate the body. Like anapanasati or the 32 parts of the body. Shall we end here tonight?